Okay, quickie info for coloring people before the video starts. I've used all the pencils featured today in my books and would recommend them. And you can find the links for my books below. Hi, it's Dia. Today I'm going to be drawing an apple three times. One with Spira Farben pencils, one with Karen Dash Pablo pencils, and one with Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils. The Polychromos are oil, just like the Spira Farben, and the Pablo Karen Dash pencils are wax-based. Um, right now, like I do with a lot of different fruit, I, I, I do a very light, very sheer first, um, first layer of red because the basic color of the apple is red. As you can see, there's, there's nothing fancy. I didn't really take a long time. Um, and I am using the Spira Farbens first. Oh, and you know what? I hope you follow me. I hope you subscribe below because I'm going to be giving away another set, not today, but relatively soon, maybe after Christmas. And if you hit subscribe below, you'll be able to get um, notified uh, for all my giveaways and for all my information, and you won't miss a thing. So back to the video. So like I was saying, the first layer is usually the main color of the um, either the the fruit or the flower. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to jump jump to this. This is a skewer, and I'm making little tiny dots that are going to remain white or light colored, and they they kind of make a little indentation in the paper, so you can color right over them and they stay white. So for this first apple, I'm gonna basically be telling you what I'm doing, and I'll, I'll put the colors underneath. The Spira Farbens don't have color names, so I will list the, um, the numbers. Now at this point in the apple, I, I'm still doing super light layers and I have gone to a, a, a little bit of a deeper red and I'm just lightly going over uh, the areas that I've already done in that in that lighter red shade. In this area up on top I'm focusing a little bit more um, making the lines and the details on the apple a little more distinct. Nothing real specific at this point And this is even a darker red. It's almost got a little bit of a maroon cast to it. Now on that side of the apple, it, it, it'll be a little bit darker because the light source is coming from the right. Still with a very light hand, I'm making a little more of the details apparent. When I use colored pencils, I have a tendency to make little teeny weeny circles. But it, they're not even circles, they're almost ovals. I find that the ovals kind of overlap nicely with, with one another. But I don't do it all the time. Like here, you're, you're seeing me use an up and down motion because the apple has lines and indications in it that go up and down or vertical. So I don't have a problem um, with, with the results if I do see those up and down shapes because they're supposed to be there. You can see as I'm doing this that the layers are still very sheer. I'm not pressing very hard even though the colors are darker. I'm trying to make this look as realistic as possible, so I'm taking my time. You can see there's still a lot of texture from all the different layers that I've put on, and that's not really what an apple would look like. But I'm okay with it at that at, at this point because I'm still putting down layers that I think 
enhance the shape of the apple, the color of the apple, and um, I'm not going to worry about that until I start blending with the white pencil. So as you can see, almost instantly, now I'm, I, I, I was going to say almost instantly as I push harder, but I'm not really pushing that hard yet because I don't want to completely burnish the apple because I want to put more layers. When you use the white pencil, it, it not only blends it, it mutes the colors a little, a little tiny bit. So as you're doing this, keep, keep in mind that you're going to probably want to go over again and again. And then when you go over again with more colors, it'll bring the colors back to life. So now I'm going over the white blended areas, which is the whole apple, with the same color red that I started with, very, very lightly. I'm adding some yellow. Now this, this color is very intense and very bright, and it looks like I'm pushing very hard, but as you can see, I'm holding the pencil relatively far back and that disallows me to push too hard. That same red. Adding more layers. And remember when I use that little um, skewer in the beginning, um, there's enough color in the apple now that we're able to see some of those little tiny dots. I'm using a very sharp black pencil right now and adding some fine details that unfortunately you really can't tell in in the stem. I'm also using some green and some uh, like like a sienna color to make the stem look realistic. Going back in with that sharp black and adding some black lines and shadows to the apple itself. I'm pushing very lightly. I just want indications of shadows, not real black lines. Tombow Mono Zero Eraser to the rescue. Here's a like a, a brownish purple that's that's within the set that I thought was such a perfect color for the apple. This is like an aubergine color. And you wouldn't automatically look at an apple and think that there is purple in it, but the, the darker areas, you know, those really luscious, dark apples definitely have purple in their, in their shadowy parts or their darker parts. <clears throat> Blending with the white again. You can see that the apple's really starting to feel like an apple now. I'm going in with that yellow color again, and I'm, I'm doing the same kind of blending that I was doing with the white, but this adds more dimension and richness to it. Doing a quick shadow. And blending it. And being a little fussy. Using the Signo white gel pen and adding a highlight mark.
So I did the whole apple with the Shapiro Farbins. They, they held a point great. They layered really well. And as you can see, I did a lot of layers and went over it with white and yellow several times and the dark colors still went over. I was still able to get fine details. And the apple looks really good. Now this was the most inexpensive set out of the three that I used today. And for 72 pencils under $30, I think it was, I think it was a, a, a a really good result and I would have no problem recommending these to someone who's just starting out drawing or coloring or someone who's been doing it for quite a while. Oh and the other thing I wanted to say about this set I love the yellows and the greens in this set they're bright they're vibrant and I can't say that either of the other two sets had those kind of colors. They're similar, but they're not quite the same. Um, they're, they're just, they're very, very nice. Now I'm just going back in one last time with a dark shadowy color. Oh, this is more black detail on the stem, and voila, Spearer Farben Apple. And now the next one I'm doing um, with the Karen Dosh Pablos. I tried to recreate it, like I said, as closely as possible. I'm using the skewer again to make the dots going over with a lighter red for that first layer. And I'm gonna be doing almost exactly the same as I did for the Spira Farben apple. I'm gonna show less because you've already seen it. Now, I'm going in with some yellows. These yellows, like I said, are a bit different. They're, they're warmer and slightly deeper. Now I had less reds and oranges in this set. No, I'm sorry, less reds and maroons in this set. So I, I went in a little bit with some orange because I'm trying to recreate the exact look. So I kind of had to mix and match a little bit differently and get hopefully very similar results. Now here's a darker red. I'm going over the whole thing. These pencils are wax. They're a little bit drier feeling, and I would say they're a little more uh, solid feeling or sturdy feeling, and I don't mean that necessarily in a positive or negative way. That's just my impression. They, they feel a little bit, a little bit more like pastel without the dust, they're, they're very nice to work with. I would say the point held a little bit longer than the Spear of Farbins. It's, it's very interesting to even look back and see this as I'm, as I'm recording. The texture is different already and I and I haven't blended. I'm trying to think what is the actual difference. I think maybe because they were a little bit harder 
they filled in the tooth of the paper faster. Now here I am already at the blending point. This gave a really nice result too. I think that this white pencil dulled down the colors even more quickly. So that means, one, that the white is a little bit more impactful. Maybe it's a little bit more intense. And maybe the formula is a little bit I don't know if the word would be thicker, but I had to go in and brighten up the colors. Whoop, there you, there you go. So I obviously went in with red after the orange. Now to get the same maroon color that I got in the Spira Farben set, I'm going in with some purple. It's like a plummy purple from this from this Pablo set. And when I first did it, I got a little nervous because it looked purple. And now I'm getting to the point where I'm, I'm doing those little fussy details because the apple, although it looks so smooth and shiny, if you actually look at the surface and the colors there's all little like webbings of purples and plums and maroon. It's actually really beautiful. Now I'm doing the same thing with, with the black. I, I did that on purpose. I wanted to see how the, the pencil sharpened up and uh, enabled me to use very um, tiny details. Not use tiny details, but create little tiny details and uh, allowing me to be a perfectionist in the picture. I would say this picture in general came out a slight bit warmer, um, possibly partially due to the set and partially due to just how I, I did it. Um, I think it came out very, very similar. And the third set I used is the Faber-Castell Polychromos. I'm going in once again with with the red, with the oranges and the um, very light celery green in the top area by by the stem. I would say these pencils. Uh, well, I wouldn't say it. They definitely had the biggest variety. I had a bigger set, so I didn't have to. Um, I didn't have to try to figure out what what colors to use. Um, like this, this is a, a darker red that I that I was just using that I didn't have in in the other sets, and it it made for um, maybe slightly quicker work. I'm going over everything in yellow. And looking back at this, I should have used a slighter yellow, not a slighter, a lighter yellow in the area over by the stem rather than that really rich yellow at first because it, um, the lighter green and the lighter yellow in that area uh, makes for a really nice glowy effect. Now, I saw on a video once that someone said that you couldn't go in with the um, Faber-Castell polychromos pencils and blend with the white, and I didn't find that at all. I, so I was a little nervous to go over the whole thing after I just did those other, other two and they blended so nicely with, with the white. I was kind of rooting for them to actually be able to do it, and they, and they, they blended perfectly well with the, with the white pencil. These pencils held a point really well, and I would probably say, out of all of them, 
um, they were the smoothest to color with. And I, I can't, I, I don't even, I can't even tell you exactly why it, they're just very buttery, very smooth, and yet hard at the same time. They are considerably more expensive than the Spira Farbens. So you would, you would almost expect them to have some features that were better. The black around the stem was um, very easy to use, although I have to say in the Pablos, I think the black pencil was my favorite. There, it, it, It's got some kind of like very smooth, creamy um, blendability factor that, yes, the other two also had, but it, it happened to be my favorite one. I would say of all the pencils, the um, the Faber-Castell Polychromos had the most intense colors. And there's something very luminous about the Spira Farbens also, but I can't say they're as intense as the Polychromos. So on each of the apples, I did an area in the stem with the black and on the shadow with the, with the black. Oh, now here I decided I was going to do the, um, the little speckly details on the apple with a Fisker's X-Acto knife. You're supposed to actually put your finger through it and use it that way. And I do occasionally, but I also do it when I just grab it. Oh, now here's the here's the highlight. I have to say the highlighter pen worked the best over these pencils also. And here they all are. As you can see, I tried to I tried to make them as similar as possible and they do look similar and I wish that you could I wish you could be in the room with me and see just the subtle details in the differences. Just so you know, the 72 set of Polychromos is about $140, the 80 set of the Pablo is about $148, and the 72 set of the Spira Farben pencils is under $30. They all did a lovely job. And I would recommend buying a few of each and finding what pencil feel you like the best. I hope you like the video and I hope you subscribe below. See you at the next video. Bye.